Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples on a lovely rooster-free Florida Tuesday. There's no sign of birds. The roosters aren't doing their thing. Uh, you know, everything seems fairly chipper. Uh, there is supposed to be some sort of a cold front coming through, which is a little bit laughable uh, because a cold front here and, you know, at the end of March means it's going to be 84 uh, for a high instead of 90, uh, which, you know, I'll take it. Don't get me wrong because, again, July is on the way. Uh, we're into day whatever of the this whole coronavirus thing. Uh, I've lost track of time because of the whiskey therapy. Again, ever since I found out that whiskey does kill uh, the coronavirus, at least if it, you know, if you had it out on a table and you sprayed whiskey on it, uh, it may, you know, toot its horns for a little while, but it's going to die. So I figure it can't hurt to just, to, you know, guzzle it as much as I can. And uh, I've been keeping to that regimen and uh, feel very healthy as a result. Uh, I do have today. What do I have? I have a 1977 Ford F-150 pickup truck. Now, you know, pickup trucks, I can't say they're not my thing because until the Datsun came along, I'd been driving the old Silverado for a couple of years. I fell in love with it. It became, a, a man, if you had gone back in time and told me that I would fall in love with pickup trucks and be driving them, I would have told you you were insane. Uh, but they're addictive. There's something about them. You know, I have this weird feeling that pickup trucks became the big cars of the American world after the big cars went away. So, I mean, if you drove a 82 Park Avenue uh, and all of a sudden the next Park Avenue you go to look at in 87 is this weird little front drive thing that makes an Accord look pretty, uh, you may gravitate towards a pickup. And I think that did happen to some extent. Uh, but anyway, whether you like it or not, the pickup truck has been around pretty much since the beginning of cars. In fact, uh, Gottlieb uh, Daimler came up with a pickup uh, back in 18-something. <laughs> I guess you could say he invented it like every other damn thing. Uh, but it wasn't until 1925 that the true first uh, American pickup truck was made, and of course that was made by Ford. Uh, fast forward many years and you get into this one. This is 77 again. Uh, this is the sixth generation Ford uh, F-series uh, pickup truck. Uh, and it has gone on to become not just the best-selling truck in America, but the best-selling vehicle in America for many, many years running. Uh, it's, uh, they sell more of these things than they do Camrys, and that, uh, that really tells you something about what Americans like, or at least a proper Amer I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Anyway, 1977 was a pretty interesting year. I went back and looked at some of the stuff that went on, and it was kind of fascinating. Uh, you know, you had Apple came out with the uh, the 2E. They started out. You had Oracle started out. And you had Star Wars in the movie theaters and Saturday Night Fever. Uh, you know, you had... Um, well, here's some interesting stuff. You had the Coalition of Free Men was formed. That was a men's rights group. Apparently, they were all pissed off. Women were getting the attention, so they came out with a group of their own. Uh, the first death by... Well, this was interesting. They reinstituted the death penalty, another great American tradition. And uh, after reinstituting it, the first guy, uh, Gary Gilmore, I thought he did a song called Cars. That might have been someone else. Maybe it was Dreamweaver. Uh, anyway, for the song Dreamweaver, he was shot to death by firing squad in Utah uh, back in 1977, which, uh, you know, I mean, that's quite a way to go. I don't know if that's considered cruel and unusual punishment today, but probably. So uh, we don't have firing squad anymore. Uh, Tokyo Rose was pardoned by Jimmy Carter. There was a great blizzard of 77 in New York. Uh, snow fell in Miami for the first time maybe ever, at least ever recorded, and uh, still remains the furthest south other than, you know, the Hawaii mountains that snow fell in the United States. Uh, you had the end of the women Marines. They just became the Marines, another seminal moment in American history, probably not for the better. Uh, Leonard Skinner, they had that famous plane crash. That poor bastard had a very bad day. If you remember, the plane crashed. A few of the guys died. Uh, this one guy badly injured, trekked over fields and dales and hills, and finally made his way into a farmer's yard, who was probably driving an F-150, by the way. And the farmer thought he was coming for his daughters, and he just shot him. So apparently they're great friends today. The farmer was a bad shot, so the guy lived. And uh, anyway, another little fascinating bit about Leonard Skinner. Uh, also, Elvis died. 
Uh, but to me, far and away, the most fascinating thing of 77 uh, was the uh, Mormon sex in chains case. And that's where this little Mormon boy in London, of all places, was kidnapped and repeatedly sexually attacked by a former Miss Wyoming. And uh, frankly, everybody found this rather hilarious. And, uh, you know, I, I do to some extent today. I mean, I can't say that if I'm ever kidnapped by a former Miss Wyoming, you know, unless it was from like 20 or 30 years ago, uh, I'm going to be very unhappy about it. But uh, apparently he was, and it became a big case. And uh, then the woman went on to... Uh, you know, do other weird crap, and then she became homeless, and then she finally ran over someone and killed them. I think she killed a Holocaust survivor in 2019 and ended up in a mental institution. So, uh, pretty fascinating case from 77. But anyway, nobody probably wants to hear about any of this crap, so let's get on to the truck. So here it is. This is what they call a dent side series from 1973 to 79. Uh, I believe it was also the series that Uncle Jesse drove in the Dukes of Hazard. so I have a little bit of memory of that. Uh, they call it the dent side, obviously, because it has indentations on the side. The generation that came before it was called a bump side, I believe, because it had a little uh, flare in the bodywork that came out. This went the other way. Uh, the truck was selling pretty well at that point, so Ford didn't want to uh, do too much to screw it up. Uh, you know, in, in what am I, 48, the F-Series came out, and it was a real seminal moment in pickup truck history. Of course, the war was over, uh, people were making money, they wanted stuff, farmers had money, and uh, Ford decided to come out with a truck that wasn't just all utility. Uh, it would have some luxurious bits as well and would remind occupants that they might be in a car. And that was the birth of the F-Series. And, of course, that continued on and on to the point today uh, that we have what uh, are known as cowboy Cadillacs. You know, I mean, you get in some of these modern $60,000, $70,000 pickup trucks, they look like Bentleys inside. You know, it's a very different world from how the pickup truck was first envisioned. Anyway, so in 1975, the first F-150 came out, and that was, you know, who knew? That, that sort of was meant from... Uh, to balance the gap between the F-100 and the F-250, and it worked. Uh, people went nuts for them and, again, became the best-selling American car for, like, five decades running. So Ford really hit a home run with that thing. Uh, this thing, so F-150 Ranger 4x4, which is kind of cool, uh, does have the 460, which was the biggest motor on offer in 1977, about 225 horse. Uh, this one's been tweaked, and we'll get into that in a minute. So uh, anyway, yeah, in fact, let's just get into this truck, not into the general thing of trucks. Everybody knows about trucks. There's What, what do you know? It's, you know, it's a full frame body on frame cab thing that you can haul crap around in. So we're going to start in the back. You know, pickup trucks are interesting and in that Ford did continually, and Chevy and Dodge, of course, improve them. Uh, little tiny things, like they started adding more galvanized parts to them. They started beefing up, uh, you know, structure to make them last a bit longer. Little things like curving the bed here uh, made it easier for the, uh, uh, the beds to be drained and cleaned. Uh, just little touches. They added more galvanized stuff under the hood and uh, a variety of stuff. Uh, when pickups, of course, were coming out. All of them had these big fender things on the back. They call them flare sides now. Uh, but, uh, you know, they made the first sort of smooth sized pickup truck in the uh, in the 1950s. And, you know, again, history was made. Uh, this guy who built this thing is hard. Spent a lot of money on it. He put uh, new bumpers on the front and back after he painted it that have these weird little lights in them. Uh, obviously, he has a lift kit under there. Uh, he uh, put on some sort of uh, fancy looking wheels and tires. He put on a uh, little step side, you know, running board thing to help yourself into it. Uh, this is called, I believe, an eyebrow uh, grill. I think the ones that came after it were called bull nose. You know, they all have these sort of these nifty little um, uh, the monikers for the different trucks that came along. People were really into this. Uh, but anyway, there it is. So you've got the round headlamps, the Ford over the grill. And uh, let's have a look under the hood. Oh, Lord. Okay, so there it is. There is a 460 cubic inch big block. Uh, apparently, this thing has been tweaked to put out about 500 horsepower. You see all this insane looking copper tubing stuff. Uh, this motor was built by... 
uh, a guy who's very famous around here for building swamp buggy motors. And if you don't know the swamp buggy races in Naples, it's the greatest other side of the tracks thing we've got. I mean, it makes a monster truck rally look like attending La Boheme at the, the Met in New York. I mean, it is a serious redneck event where people go out into the, you know, swamps of Florida or of Naples, call your county, and drive these giant 8,000 horsepower swamp buggies against each other through mud pits and uh, eat gators on sticks and whatever else it is they do out there. Uh, you know, as freakish as it all is, I can tell you that they're having a lot more fun than we are. Uh, but anyway, you see it's all yeah, very well done in there. You got headers, you got a fancy looking carb, you got um, uh, electronic ignition. He added vintage air to it. There's the compressor uh, over there. And uh, the thing does run pretty good. And they did start with a nice rust-free truck. So uh, everything's nice and proper under there. New radiator, you know, all very, uh, all very exciting. Let's get that back down. Love it. Uh, on this generation of truck, they did tilt the uh, back window forward a little bit. You can see it's angled. Uh, that uh, helped sort of with reflections and high beams behind you, that sort of thing, with visibility. Uh, they curved the windshield around. All very handsome and uh, very proper in every way. <laughs> so you can tell I don't know shit about pickup trucks. Okay, inside, I don't know about this. We've got some kind of diamond tuck thing on the bench seat, like a Guadalajara taxi. And then up here, these little pull handles look like the frilly garters you would have seen on a Wild West hooker. So, um, you know, I'm not sure those are the ones that I would have picked. You know, it turns the ranch hands crazy. But uh, anyway, there they are, and they do help you get in the truck. I presume this door panel is all original in the way it came. Maybe, in fact, the diamond tuck is even original. Uh, Ford did some pretty goofy. Uh, cosmetic stuff around this time. Uh, carpet looks nice. Everything sort of proper in here. It's got window cranks. You know, this is sort of the mixture of, uh, you know, when Ford was going from building utilitarian trucks into adding the amount of luxury you might see in a same year LTD so that a guy could feel pretty comfortable driving it around. You know, trucks were a big thing. Remember chips with uh, John drove that big lifted Chevy that I was always in love with. In fact, if I owned this thing, I'd have to put a, a big uh, light bar in the back with, you know, KC highlighters coming over the top, probably some sort of a brush guard in the front with the same, and uh, go out and, you know, look like I was cruising for chicks with uh, hot shorts on or whatever they did in the chips era. Oh, God, let me get up here and crank this thing up. Okay, this is fascinating. I've got four keys with this truck, and they all look identical, but they're not. Uh, two of them are for the ignition, and two of them are for the door or some such. So, yeah, let's see if, yeah, I got lucky. So, a couple of shots of gas. And <laughs> that 460 fires to life with what just sounds like America, I have to say. I mean, that is, a very lovely sounding big rumbling V8 that's obviously cammed up a little bit in the headers. Yeah, maybe it really does have 500, who knows? We'll see when we go for a spin. Try not to kill anyone. Uh, in fact, the first muscle truck, that's a theme that came along. It was some sort of a Dodge that had a wedge motor, the precursor, how the hell with the seatbelt, uh, precursor to Hemi. And uh, actually got very quick. It was like, you know, 400 horsepower or something, but apparently they didn't upgrade the brakes, so there aren't many of those things left, but they're worth a fortune if you can find one. Uh, anyway, you can see the instrument cluster, pure 70s Ford could, uh, but you know, they got like wood trim and fancy silver stuff and, you know, your headlights. It could be right out of an LTD or a Granada, so, uh, you know, not super cheap. Uh, this year they moved the, um, or this gen, they moved the fan motor behind the firewall, which gave spot for a bigger dashboard and a uh, deeper glove box, so you could fit a, you know, Colt. 45 in there, no problem. Uh, the Vintage Air, it's a nice understated thing running down the bottom of the dash. We got our oil and water uh, gauges added on there. I'm sure this is going to be a very proper ashtray. Nice. We got a lighter there. Uh, you got your transfer case, which I'm going to leave in too high. Uh, it all works fine, but you have to get out and manually lock these hubs. So uh, to go driving over any sort of obstacles is just not in my thought process today. Does have power steering, thank God. 
Look at that up there even, you've got this uh, diamond tuck stuff. I really do feel like I'm in a Belgian whorehouse. It's got a C6 three-speed automatic, very bulletproof. A nice ride height. Women would like this. They like to sit up high. So uh, if your wife is asking you for some sort of a enlarged vehicle to uh, sit up high in, you might want to consider this lifted 77 Ford pickup with a big cam in it. I'm trying not to kill this nitwit who's pushing shit in the middle of the road. <laughs> it's not what I would call Lexus smooth. Uh, you know, it's uh, vibrating a little bit as I go down the road. The brakes are power assisted, but feel, you know, adequate. You have any kind of heat in the motor yet? Not really, so I'm not going to hammer it yet. Let's just keep driving. And uh, I can tell you, going down the road in this thing, I feel like America. I do. I wish we had the Bald Eagle fly over today, uh, maybe an F 16 group and formation leaving red, white, and blue trails behind it, uh, you know, machine guns under the wings of the bald eagle. Uh, I mean, this to me is really just screaming patriotism. And all I can hear as I go down the road is that little Greta girl, the global warming girl, you know, how dare you, how dare you. How dare you? And that does sort of add a little bit of joy to my drive. <laughs> that was like quarter throttle. I'm gonna let the engine heat up a little bit. We got any heat in there? Yeah, we're almost to 180. Got nice cold air coming out of there. Again, this is not what I would call a super smooth ride, but I've been in worse. I think the guy spent like 30 grand or more on this thing, uh, you know, getting it into shape. and. I suppose in comparison to a lot of 77 Ford pickups out there, it probably drives better than some. Let's see if it has a better turning radius than I thought. I thought we'd have to drive over the side. Well, let's just hammer it. Holy shit. Okay, well, the truck does have plenty of pep. Nice torque. Uh, it feels... You know, I don't know. I think there's a certain kind of guy who would feel very comfortable uh, driving this at a high rate of speed, but I am not one of them. Uh, it just doesn't feel securely planted to anything. And it has a center of gravity higher than the, uh, I, shouldn't, uh, I won't say that. Anyway, um, there it is. So this is a 1977 Ford F-150 dent side pickup truck. These things are becoming very collectible, these uh, these old pickups. For a while they were free, but not anymore. Now you got to spend money to get one. Uh, this one's reasonably priced for what it is. It's rust free, it's nice, it's for sale on our website uh, if you can find it and have an interest. I reviewed it by demand. People have said, oh, review that Ford. I mean, I feel like Lidham Abner driving this thing around. It just isn't my style. But, um, you know, that said, I you know, I get it. I get why people dig them. But it's just not for me. Anyway, thank you very much for having a look. We really appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to find something a little more, you know, low to the ground tomorrow to review. And uh, we'll keep plugging away while, while the world keeps shutting down. So thank you very much and uh, take care and we'll see you at the next one.